October 2023 has come and gone and that means you could have been watching Severance Season 2 right now. Believe it or not, October was the initial scheduled release date for Season 2 of Severance, but unfortunately for you and I, we ended up in the wrong timeline. I've seen the grief in the comment sections about Season 2 not being here yet and trust me when I say I feel your pain. Stay tuned until the end of this video if you want to know more about what's going on with Season 2. But in the meantime, I've taken the time to gather up some interesting facts about Season 1 that you might not know. Fourth wall breaking stuff, as well as some of the interesting finer details about the show's production. For example, did you know that a certain someone despises a certain food item that was featured in the show and that might actually be an important clue to theory hounds like us? We'll talk about the Lumen Building, aka the Bell Labs building in New Jersey, as well as some cool details about some of the things that went on off camera. And I'll even add in some theories there for you, because you deserve it, and I gotta be me. Off the top, I've gotta ask you though, you do know this video has spoilers, right? We're about to dig into some of the major plot points and details of Severance, so be sure that's what you really wanna do, because once we get started, it's gonna be a minute before we come up for air. Props to the channel supporters over at Patreon. Your continued support of the channel makes it possible for me to make videos like these, and if you're interested in helping me out, out, you can check the link. I've also got a Discord for the channel, and you can check that out in the description too. All right, you scurvy land lovers, strap on the tinfoil headpiece because it's time to dive. So let's kick things off with everyone's favorite middle manager, the man with the million dollar smile, but you wouldn't want to fall asleep with him in the same room. Mr. Seth Milchik. It might be hard to tell by his performance, but the actor who plays Milchik, Tramel Tillman, he, well, he's still got that new kid shine because although he has extensive experience in stage acting, he's relatively new to film acting. Ask any actor and they'll tell you that the two are almost completely different animals. Yeah, the competition was stiff, but I still think he was robbed and he should have gotten that Emmy Award for a singular performance. The good news is there will be plenty of opportunities for another bite at the Apple because Apple has already greenlit two more seasons of the show. This means we're getting at least three seasons in total, at a minimum. So as long as Milchik appears on that screen for any decent amount of time, I have a feeling this man will finally get his flowers in the coming seasons. Regardless, Tillman has received high praise for his performance by just about everyone in the know, including one of his castmates, the one and only Christopher Walken. No doubt, some of this success comes from his stage acting background, but a lot of it is just a matter of personality. I think this goes a long way in explaining why he's so good in this role with his ability to display opposite vibes at once. Speaking of Christopher Walken, it turns out the reason that he made the cast roster was because of a one Irving Bailey. Yeah, it's actually John Turturro who got him onto the show. These two guys know each other from past projects and they enjoyed working together. So it was Turturro that got in Ben Stiller's ear and got Walk in the role. It's really crazy to think that we came so close to Burt being played by someone else. And their chemistry on camera was just what the doctor ordered. On an Irving theory related note, in one interview with Ben Stiller about the show, he mentioned something very interesting that definitely got my attention. He mentions that in in season two, we will likely see more about what Irving's been doing to try to get in contact with his Innie. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. We have confirmation that Audi Irv really is trying to reach his Innie counterpart from the outside. Looking back at those coffee and painting scenes and those moments when Irv wigs out at the office, these scenes probably mean exactly what we thought they did. So. Is it Agent Bailiff or just Private Citizen Bailiff on the case? And why exactly is that military connection so important that they made sure to put it front and center? The theories are swirling in my head already, but uh, we gotta move on. Now, I wanna talk about a character on the show that I don't think we've truly identified yet, and it's a real shame. Props to Benjamin for reminding me of this fact. Well, in this case, if you didn't already know, this massive, iconic piece of architecture is located in Holmdel, New Jersey, and it was erected in the early 1960s. The plan was drawn up by an architect named Eero Saarinen back in 1958. This building housed over 6,000 workers, so this is not your average size office. Today, it acts as live work staging for tech bros because, of course, it does. The idea behind its design was that it was a vision of the future, at least it was back in the 1960s when it was erected. You gotta remember, this was back when vision of the future looked like the Jetsons or Lost in Space. They were a, a little off. That said, the building still has a feeling that is out of place and time, and this was part of the reason why it was chosen as the headquarters of Lumen. Personally, I love the brutalist style of this architecture, and I actually think I might drive up there and take a look at this building myself. Finally, a legit reason to go to New Jersey. I'm just kidding. We're gonna swing back around to the old Lumen Lair in a bit, but for now, let's move on. So I wanna talk about the musical dance experience because that one was full of surprises. A lot of what happens in the scene was purely experimental or just very unusual. For one, when the showrunners decided to go with the idea of Milchik doing the dance routine, 
they were not prepared for what they witnessed. Part of the reason for this is that Tillman had the whole thing choreographed with the help of a professional. Plus, they just had no idea he could dance like that. Another funny thing I discovered was that the disco light routine was a surprise to the actors on the set. So when you see those delighted faces as the lights come on, those are genuine surprise reactions. For some reason, knowing that puts a smile on my face. I dare you to go back and watch it again with what you know now and not smile. You can't do it. So a former little birdie told me that Ben Stiller avoids a particular food. He abstains from it completely out of a deep dislike for it and that food is eggs. That's right, Ben Stiller can't stand eggs. I have to say this is a new one for me. I've never heard of anyone outright disliking eggs, but that's just me. Why does this matter, you ask? Well, think about it this way. This tweet in a way reveals something about the show in a roundabout sort of way. It seems that eggs simply had to be used in the show or in this particular scene. It's part of the story in some way, otherwise Stiller would just have left it out. So if eggs have to be in the story, what does that mean? This is another way that food is so weird in this show. And it's got me wondering, what is the egg connection? We've got the egg drop competition, and we also have the deviled eggs. Eggs do hold some special place in the story. Very interesting. One of the unusual things about Servants is the way the first season was shot, as is the case with most TV shows. They're shot in chronological order, so episode 1, episode 2, etc. They do this because it just makes sense to do it that way. It's much easier to keep things on track, and it's a lot less confusing for everyone involved by production standards. Severance required some adaptations. For one, the production staff had to film the entire season like a Hollywood film. And by that, I mean they shot the whole season at once instead of one episode at a time. And it was done out of order. And they managed to do this in just 10 months. Not only that, but every shot that you saw on the seventh floor was actually on a giant hand-built stage in the Bronx. That's pretty crazy when you think about it but given the results i'd say things worked out fine despite it all while we're on the subject of the severed floor man i am just killing it with the segues today have you ever wondered why the vibe down there is so off that eerie uneasy feeling comes from a combination of the use of color and liminal spaces on the set the set designer made painstakingly detailed choices that add up to the perfect atmosphere for the setting did you know that the particular color of white paint used on the walls took literally dozens and dozens of samples to get right and the carpet that seems to cover the entire floor has a very distinct green color that i would describe as antiseptic and almost depressingly green the walls that make up the corridors and rooms we see in a lot of these shots are actually the same spaces being reconfigured with movable walls and doors. Kind of like an old gymnasium or those movable walls you sometimes see in healthcare facilities here in the United States. Actor Patricia Arquette, she and other actors would constantly get lost because the place was such a maze and it would constantly change on them. Also, the computers looked like they were ripped straight out of 1992. They were custom made with the specific goal of looking so out of time. The screens are actually CRT, but they're also touch screens, by the way, which is just a perfect example of what I mean. We can made a computer that if it ever came out in the real world and the engineers describe what they were doing, no one would believe them. It's a cathode ray tube, but it's a touchscreen. It has a trackball. We recognize some aspects of it and some not at all. The contradictory qualities are supposed to be baffling, but it's also a bit amusing. It doesn't look like an adult high-tech computer. It looks like a toy. And I have to agree, it does definitely look like a toy. One of the things you quickly realize is that a lot of the set design is about making you, the viewer, feel disoriented. Like you're recalling a dream rather than a real event. The details don't quite fit right, so it's all a bit fuzzy. This is also true when it comes to Lumen severed floor. There are parts of it that remind us of older time periods and others that seem so present day. We see this everywhere, from set to wardrobe and even in the dialogue. I was careful not to show anything that was easily recognizable. We wanted to confuse the viewers about whether this is a period piece, contemporary, or the future. This explains why we see all those late model cars mixed in with modern tech like smartphones, but it also accounts for the small details like Milchik's presentation. I said it before, and I'll say it again, this man is giving off strong 1970s action hero vibes, and it's not an accident. Even the color palette of the packaging on the snack boxes and the vending machine or the interfaces on these apps feel consistent and intentionally hard to place. Mark cleans the carpet with one of those old school manual contraptions that I haven't seen since middle school instead of a vacuum cleaner. Need I remind you that this is happening in a building that claims to have high tech code detectors capable of feats current day technology can only hint at. It's easy to appreciate the fact that they were able to pull this off in such a subtle way that it took most of us a while to put a finger on what was making us feel so weird. 
and I was gonna leave this one out. I found too many facts and details about the show to put in one video. But let's fit this last one in. Did you know that season one of Severance was supposed to have 10 episodes? You know that cliffhanger of an ending we get in episode 9 where all of the AWOL innies are left dangling off of said cliff before we fade to black? We were initially going to see the results of their actions when the overtime contingency ended. Yeah, that's right. We were supposed to see what happened in episode 10. So we'd end up seeing what Irving says to Bert after the doors open, which by the way, that scene was changed too. He only says Bert's name at the door, but originally he had a whole bunch of dialogue that he was supposed to say there, just as an aside. But we also get to see which part of Milchik Dylan sinks those choppers into next. Zilla thought it might be better to make us wait, and I've gotta say I think it was the right idea. The amount of anxiety I felt after the final episode was on par with some of the best TV cliffhangers of all time. I mean honestly, this was like when the Losties finally opened the hatch door, and no I don't think the show will end up like Lost, don't jinx it, think good thoughts. I think this finale is a large part of why we're also wrapped up in the show and can't wait to see what happens next. We want answers, and we want them now. As for season 2, worry not to innies, all is not lost. As recent news suggests, things are moving forward with regards to the writer side of the strike that kicked off last summer. That part of the contention has been worked out, and the writers are going to be better compensated as they should be. But the actor's strike is still sizzling on the Barbie, with no real signs of progress at this time. That said, things still look promising, and I think we'll definitely see some progress on the part of the studios inevitably. The longer this thing goes on, the more pressure there is for the studios to stop being goofy about this and pay people enough to actually live on. So, still, no dates to speak of for season 2 yet, but I'll be sure to notify you when I get word, either in a community post or in future videos. And of course, you can always let me know what information you find out that I can disseminate to everybody else. While you're here, I might as well mention that Silo is going to get theory treatment soon, <laughs> and another mystery show. That new mystery show is actually coming up as my next video. I will heap praise on everyone and anyone who can guess what the show is. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. Thanks again to the supporters, the regulars, the commenters for making this experience what it is. I see you and I appreciate you. Take time for yourself, keep your head up, and until the next dive, off you go.